It's, it's not them. They can't be blamed. They can do whatever they want. They can murder people for psychotropic drugs. It doesn't matter. They're politicians. So what happens? That's one of my questions. So you take a seed out of the top, you plant it, you, know, you smoke it, uh-oh, you're busted. <laughs> it's like, wait, I mean, these are serious things. Right. <laughs> Truth. Oh, and I really love this one. You know, come on, we aren't stupid. I was in mom and dad's medicine cabinet all the time when I was young. I was a drunk, a drug addict. That's in my testimony. I'll go in there and take the, the pills here and there. You're going to have kids stoned now. Hey, where's mom's stash at? Where's dad's stash at? Hey, I know where it's at. Go rip off front of the bus and get stoned. Oh, okay. Now I don't have to worry about getting busted out in the street. People, this is what's going to happen. Not once, not twice, thousands of times. Oh, heaven. And I'm going to assure you this. That weed you get through the system is going to be loaded with THC, and it's going to be some good green weed. It's going to be some good stuff. Green business. People, we got to face the truth. <laughs> the kids are going to love that. <laughs> That's not a truth. <laughs> Brownies. <laughs> yeah, brownies. You get, get, get it all at once. Once she's taken care of her. But, but this is serious stuff that, that we have to face. But it's going to continue to happen. It's going to continue to get opiates are, are, are rampant now. You know, it's, it's just everything. And we have to wake up to it. Listen, we, it's, we are now affected by the homeless that are out there, which are mental health the inmates and the less fortunate for whatever reason, and we can't even take care of them. But we, we aren't understanding that back here, okay, right here, before the fact, there are future inmates, our future people that are going to be in mental illness, etc. We need to stop it now. We need to stop it right now. What's going to stop it is when we start stepping out and exposing the truth of it. Amen. The truth of psychotropic drugs, the truth of what it's doing to the families, the, but, but above all, what it's doing to God. Amen. And what it's doing to Jesus Christ, the message of the cross, and the love that he has, what we has, have done. To that. God says, look, I don't want to hear you. I don't even want to hear you. Do you think Jesus heard a word from any of them when he comes through that temple flipping tables? He cared less what they asked for, what they said. God says, I care about what you do. Not works, works don't get you to heaven, only the cross. But to my children, I care about what you do. And when I see, can you imagine, this is what I say to people, do you realize 18 20 some thousand children die every day from the effects of starvation. One every five seconds worldwide. Can you believe that? So when we're at Sunday service, when we're worshiping God, where, where do you think He's really looking? Do you really think He's looking at us? He's looking at the faces of those little children taking their last breath. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt He's doing it in tears. No. He's looking at those hopeless that are incarcerated that really want help, that are really paying for their penalty. Their, they pay their penalty and they inside they're constantly paying for their crime and they're crying out for help. But they can't get it because they got a political system that cares less. Mrs. McVeigh, who's the chair before Wetzel, says in her report, it's in her report that 3,800 inmates stayed incarcerated because the Department of Corrections uh, failed to produce the programs they needed to do to get out. So they were held because they didn't do the programs when she admitted it was the department's fault. Putting mentally ill into solitude. Solitary confinement. Putting them in there for being mentally ill. Not a crime. In 2016. What if 
we done to God? What? <clears throat> Muslims get more attention on TV than <coughs> Jesus does. Hmm. share tomorrow night on various things, so please get the word out and uh, you know, invite some people um, depending on who's here it'll depend on what I go over again and, and go into but um, the Goliath of Pennsylvania's government is not as big as it seems it can be knocked down and it can be changed and the very power that can do it, they don't want anything to do with it. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. So we have to keep fighting. And what we need to do is, people, if we want to pray, we need to pray for our eyes to be open Amen. to the hurt and hopelessness that's around us. You know, look at the information. You know, get to know uh, the hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Every face of hopelessness and homelessness that you can come across, mm -hmm. I'll have information for you. Whether it's a child mentally ill, whether it's incarcerated, whether it's because of addictions or loss of jobs, uh, somebody in CYS issues, anything <laughs> you can imagine. I can, I can give you information and facts on on how you can be a part of the solution. Look, another, just quickly, CYS, I've watched it so many times. They'll come in and strip a child right out of a mother's arms. Really? Really? When the church, how is a child and mother ever going to learn together how to care for one, of, one another if you strip the child from the mother? Of all people, the church should be there. Mentors to help that child and mother stay together and grow 24-7. That's what's needed by the church. Not strip a child. I watched it happen. This, this is another thing. Our politicians, our government makes me sick. We can't stand it. There was a mother and a child on our property at a homeless center. Being, you know, the homeless outreach is being attacked at this time from all different directions. A young, young daughter and her mother. And I'm sitting in my office. I was at the outreach at the time, staying there with everybody. And my the window washed over the property. I'm at my desk. Here comes the sheriff, pulls in, standing out there talking, walks down to the mother, puts her in handcuffs, takes her to the car and leaves, and the daughter's standing down there bawling, crying. I opened up the door. I said, what's going on? Well, you know, they're going to answer you. They care less. Here's the little girl standing there, lost, crying, at a homeless shelter. I bring her in the office. I look at the order. John Ford door, the judge signed it. Stripped the mother right from her daughter, right in the shelter, and cared less about the daughter. Can you tell me about that in of office? Disgusting. Oh, it's terrible. People have had it just because it's a shelter. I watch a young, young baby. Uh, my, this, this is how bad it is. Mother and a, uh, I don't know, what, a couple months old baby. Down in our Brookville shelter. Everything you try to do, people complain. There's no heat. There's no heat there. They send in a complaint. Here comes CYS and their little horses, you know. Mm -hmm. Cowboys, cowgirls, here they come. They don't even know what life is themselves. They're so young. They come in. There's no heat. 68 degrees. Heat's fine. It should be 70. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's the law. <laughs> you miss. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I get a phone call from the staff down there. <coughs> I said, is the heat on? Yes, it is. What's the heat set up? 68 degrees. What's the problem? She said it should be at 70. 
I said, you, and they're taking the baby. I said, you're kidding me. No, they're taking the baby. I said, no, you tell them to take the mother also. You keep them together, and if you can find a better place, you go right ahead. And they took them both. Now, all of a sudden, you can find a place for this mother and child, huh? You cared less that they were in a homeless shelter. You cared less about them there. Mm. You knew they were there. But for some reason, when you get a complaint, all of a sudden, you get your ears pinned back a little bit, you can take both of them somewhere. You know where they would have went? To a motel. You know who would be paying for all this? The county. The people. Why? Because some little cowgirl that doesn't know life and herself just got out of school and is put on CUS comes marching in and for some reason thinks it should be 70 instead of 68, so they're going to take a baby. So now everybody pays, and the mother and child, at least they're still together, unless they took the child for something. Oh, we fight that all the time. Because it's money, people. It's all money. And I have a lot to say about that. My child was taken from me. I cannot have her at any of my church services, any church events, on any of my property that a homeless person owns. Judge orders. I lost my whole, my whole daughter's childhood in my church because of this ministry. The attorney and my ex at the time that I will destroy you and your ministry and everything. Well, that didn't happen. Amen. Amen. But instead, because of a stupid decision, I tried my best to keep my daughter focused on Christ and what needed to be done so this didn't affect her emotionally and mentally, not being able to go to her dad's church service because homeless people were there. Not even able to come on the property church because homeless people were there. And you tell me that that's the right thing to do to a father and daughter. That's happening all over people. And all they can do is write it down. So I, I just, uh, you know, I don't to see it happen and do something about it, I know how it feels to have corruption take your child from you and not be a part of your life. And then to watch it happen to others over and over again and not being able to do anything about it. And the people that are doing it are criminals in my eyes. Mm -hmm. But there's not a darn thing that anyone would do about it yet. But we know Christ is. Amen. Oh, yes. He's going to do something about it. Yeah. And that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So I want the you, Lord. As we close here, I want you to remember for, for us, because tomorrow I'm going to talk about the scapegoat a little bit. Uh -huh. See, when we look at ourselves and we realize that we, we, uh, we just don't like who we are outside of Christ, we should hate it. We should want to lose that life <laughs> to be his. So he may increase. That's what we need in our lives. Don't wait. Yeah, it. There's only one way. We have to get upset and indignant at what? Not who we are. He loves us. But what we let happen. So we look out. We have to get a fire. We have to get an awakening, a revival. Something has to, has to you know, prick your, your heart and, and say, you know, come on. You, you've got to see what's happening around you. We've been blind to it. And now it's time to do something about it. See, Jesus was your great attorney. Mm -hmm. See, he did the greatest thing ever before he died. See, before he died, he went to the great judge before you as your attorney. He already took care of you before he took that last breath. And what did he do? He said, Father, they're all nuts. <laughs> he said, Father, they're all crazy. Is what he said. They don't know what to do. So if you have a good attorney 
and you want to get off of your charge, what do you declare? Insanity. insanity. What's the penalty for insanity? Rehabilitation. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. He went up and he declared his own insane. He said they're all insane, so therefore it is not rehabilitation through the Holy Ghost, Father. That's it. He already took care of that court docket. He's done. That's your death. Thank you, Jesus. And then he took care of your very soul. Amen. Amen. So we're all nuts. <laughs> and you know what? We have a lot out in the world to prove we are because of what has happened. But we can begin to understand some things that will start a fire in us to start making a difference. So politicians and leaders out there start telling them this stuff. I have the facts to back it. <laughs> Throw them the figures. I can't do it myself. Look, if a shelter opens up, so be it now. It opens up. Praise God for that. There's no sense in opening up until we're ready. Amen. This, this community fighting against them has to stop. It all has to stop. But we can do it by educating, educating, and remembering who we serve. A great attorney, a great God, a great king who said this house is for the homeless and the poor. Amen. Amen. Now let's pray that God will hear us again. Amen. Dear Father, we just uh, come before you, Lord, as humble uh, children of yours. And, and, and Lord, we... Uh, we sometimes don't see the way we should. And Lord, we understand what has happened uh, to our communities, our, our nation, our world. Uh, Lord, that uh, it, it's not pleasing to your eyes, but we know that your son Jesus Christ is. And, and Lord, we just claim his name and his love for us, Lord, that we know is pleasing to you. And Lord, we just ask that you hear our prayer. That, Lord, we, we can be enlightened. Uh, we can be revived. We can begin to see now uh, that there is a serious need. That there are people out there that are being used by, by people, government for money, not, not for being a human being. Uh, Lord, and, and help us to make the least of these important, knowing that that, that is what's going to be pleasing to your eyes. That is what's going to be uh, the very tonic for our spiritual soul to move ahead. And Lord, as you continue to guide and direct us, Lord, we ask that here tonight that each and every one of us know you as Lord and Savior, that everyone here tonight would, would know that in their hearts, minds, and soul. Uh, Lord, that we know when we take our last breath that you will be there uh, for us to carry us home and make ready for that great kingdom. And Lord, we just ask that every heart here tonight understands that and that the word that was spoken would just be a a word of truth that would begin to stir our hearts, that we would have conversation, get out there, tell others, and just just know that, that there is a stirring of the Holy Ghost and, and that you're going to move in, in mighty ways through your children. And Lord, just guide and direct us in all these areas as we move ahead for you and protect everyone as they leave here tonight, driving on the road, traveling mercies, and, and just all the issues that we may be struggling with, we lay before you, and we just ask that, that Lord, that you hear our prayer because we want to be the people that you created us to be now. We don't want to be caught up in the, into a corrupt world. We want to be a part of the solution, the gospel, the truth that Jesus taught. Even though maybe a little bit. Thank you for the cross, for laying down your life for each and every one of us, loving us and forgiving us. In Jesus' precious name, we pray and all God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you everyone for coming out tonight, and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow night. <laughs>